We are so excited to have the man, the myth, the legend, oh, yeah. Alan Draper, owner of Proof Pest Control. It's awesome to have you back. Now we're we're in a studio recording. So I think it'd be cool to go around and maybe pick each other's brains on pro tips for Pest World. I've seen a lot of conversations in the Facebook group, as we always do this time of year, where they ask the question, is it worth it for me to go to Pest World? Just, just a little insider information. Welcome to the Bug Bucks podcast, a podcast designed to turn you into a bug money millionaire. This episode is brought to you by Bug Bucks Plus, the number one training and education platform designed to help you build and scale your pest control companies. I am your host, Eric Bassett, and right next to me, Jay Klaus. What's up, dude? What's up, Eric and my Bug Bucksers? So, uh, okay, we were just talking about this before we hit record. Yeah. And we went on a walk last night out by the Klaus, Klaus property. Klaus Manor. Right? Yeah. And uh, I, so first of all, like, I feel like we should probably explain. So up by your house, how long is the driveway? Well, okay. So our, our driveway is probably about 50 yards or 60 yards. Yes. Um, but the road from the mailboxes to our house is, there you go. is like a mile and a quarter. Yeah. And I remember yeah. the first time that I drove down that, um, it, it looked like the set of Star Wars. Um, oh yeah, like, the village uh, forest moon of Endor. Yes, yes yeah, that's there what is it a like. forest moon of Endor section. Yeah, dude, yeah. It's, it's awesome. Yep. Um, yeah, you're like I'm, an Ewok is going to come swinging like through on a log, and trees and stuff, and you're yeah. like, oh my gosh, dude. Yeah, that's wild. great. Yeah, and uh, when people come up to our house for the first time, they're like, you know, I didn't know if I was going to hear banjo music and if I should <laughs> turn and run. <laughs> But yeah, we went on a walk. So I, maybe I mentioned this before, but we just got a new, we just have a, we got a puppy. I think she's like 11 weeks old now. And if any of you are thinking about getting a puppy, don't do it. Puppies are freaking horrible. They're cute, but dude, it's like, uh, Jack said it the best way. My son, Jack said that, uh, that Jenga is like a baby that has four legs, sharp teeth is completely mobile and can execute every nefarious thought that comes into its mind. Oh, yes. And that's yeah. true. Yeah. So we're, so we're going to walk last night to where the dog's out. And um, as we're walking, my 12-year-old daughter, she says, Dad, let's let's start running every day. And I was like, awesome. oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds great. And so this morning, June and I, she woke up. I didn't think she was going to make it. She woke up. She brought the dog. And me and June and the dogs went on a dog jog this morning. Sweet, dude. Yeah, it was awesome. We went about – uh a third of a mile. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. But, That's a good place to, good, good way yeah, to start. It was good. When I feel like yeah. it's a perfect time of year to do that. You know, it's fall, it's cool in the morning, mm -hmm. right? The fog kind of settles in still. Like mm -hmm. it's it's a sweet crisp. And time that's what it. my sweet girl was saying. Dad, I love it. I love jogging in the crisp uh, the crisp morning air. Oh yeah. Well, dude, if you yep. can get if you can get your kids to do anything with you, then that's a win. Oh yeah. Right? Especially yeah. like something that's actually uh Good for your fitness. Yeah. June's, take June's my bud. She's she's the most like me. Yeah. She looks like me. Well, much a prettier version of me. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome, dude. That sounds that sounds great. Yeah. I think that's going to be fun. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm for, stoked for our guest, though. So yes, yeah, hurry I'm, with I'm, your I'm, things. We'll, so we can... we'll get on. Uh, obviously, for everybody listening, we have an awesome guest. You guys are going to love him. A little bit of a flashback. It's going to be super yeah, cool. You might know him. All right. But before we bring them on. Just want to remind everybody listening, the best way to receive new episodes is by subscribing to our show on your preferred podcast platform like Apple, YouTube, Audible, or Spotify. If you love the show, please leave us a rating and a review. Make sure to check out our Facebook group, Bug Bucks Plus. That is B-U-G-B-U-X Plus. We have the owners only group that has over 4,500 other pest control owners waiting to connect with you and share their thoughts. We also have the Bug Bucks for Pest Pros group for non-owner team members designed to help them develop in their roles. Joining the groups is the best way to connect with us and share your feedback on our show and have your questions highlighted and discussed here on the podcast. So make sure you find us on Facebook, join the groups. Without further ado, we are so excited to have the man, the myth, the legend, oh, yeah. Alan Draper, owner of Proof Pest Control. A little bit of background. Cue not applause. That, not that you guys necessarily need it. I'm going to say it anyway. 2015, Alan decides to forego a career as an attorney and join forces with his brother to build Proof Pest Control, a company dedicated to providing the highest standard of pest management services to homeowners. The Draper brothers expanded Proof to 14 locations in seven states. Proof has hundreds of employees and sales representatives. In addition, Alan is also the founder and original host 
of the Bug Bucks podcast. Dun, dun, dun. And the first Bug Bucks podcast episode launched almost exactly three years ago on October 1st, 2020. Oh, what? I didn't right? read that part. Isn't that so crazy? Oh, that's, yeah, that's awesome. Alan, my guy, how's it going, dude? Hey, guys. Uh, it's funny being on the other other <laughs> side of this. <laughs> You know, I, don't, but, I remember when I was on that side a couple of years exactly. ago. Exactly. Yeah, yep. you went the opposite direction. Um, yep. But yeah, no, I'm I'm excited to be here. I've uh, there. I have a special place in my heart for Bug Bucks and Bug Bucksers. You know, yes. I I love what the podcast has become, and it's cool to sit back and watch you guys kind of go with it, right? Like I. You guys are just doing it. And a lot of people don't know that. People still, hey, Alan, oh, the podcast is great. Like, you're doing an awesome job. And I'm like, that's not me. That's those guys that are freaking <laughs> running with it. So that's awesome. Well, you know, it, I think it's because me and you, I probably to people that don't know us, but just know our faces, might think that we're the same person because we look pretty similar. <laughs> okay. So maybe we should play with that. If people ask we're brothers, we should say, well, not technically. I mean, we have the same, we have the same dad. <laughs> Or something like that. <laughs> you have to say mom. Yeah, there you go. That's what that's what yeah. Yeah, we have really different don't. last names. Yeah, so. disclaimer. We really don't, but. <laughs> but I think it's it's been it's been pretty cool because obviously the the evolution of Bug Bucks, you know, there was a time when uh we were recording episodes um and I was in my guest room in my house, right? And mm -hmm. Alan was in um was it in the closet in your it was, I think at one point in time, it was in a closet. Yeah. So I started when I was doing solo episodes and I was the only host. It was, it was in my closet. So, dude, and you're which, out of the closet now. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you guys set that up. I had, I, yeah, we, we did yeah, set that up. Was, yeah. Well, and like, you know, if you're trying to have a good podcast, dude, like the only thing that matters is that, that audio quality. So it's like, yeah, I'd oh, record, yeah. I'd record a, a podcast under a blanket in the closet if I had. Yeah. Wait, we didn't were. You want we weren't video so it was just audio mm -hmm. and so i'm like and i was reading on forums like hey i didn't have the best equipment they're like dude closets are really good because there's not glass and the sound is absorbed by all the clothes and stuff like that yeah and what's funny so i live in arizona and there's no ac in my closet i have a walk-in closet <laughs> but there's no ac and i would <laughs> shut the door so that sound was nice and sharp and but it would mm -hmm. get really hot. So I don't know if people want this visual, but they're going to get it anyway. Most of those <laughs> early podcasts, they were recorded with Alan, uh, you know, seen Camisa. With, I did not have a shirt on. So, <laughs> everyone's like, like, everyone's like, I got to go back and listen to those episodes. Yeah. It was yeah. like a sweat lodge. Did you have like a spirit walk while you were in there? I should have. I, yeah. I mean, there, there were a lot of awakenings happening. So... <laughs> Those are the good oh, days. Yeah. That's crazy. Awesome. Well, it's it's awesome to have you back. Now we're we're in a studio recording, and uh, it's just it's come a long way, dude. But it all started with you. So thank you for yeah. everything that you did. The founding my father pleasure. himself. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. My pleasure. So, yeah. um, before we get to bring this up, I feel like we have to dive in. Um, Pest world, right oh, around the corner. Yeah. Right. Yep. It, it is. It is on us yep. now. Um, so I think it'd be cool to go around and maybe pick each other's brains on pro tips for pest world. I've seen a lot of conversations in the Facebook group as we always do this time of year where they ask the question, is it worth it for me to go to Pest World? So might, might be kind of cool to talk about like the different levels, you know, from um, solo operators up to some of the bigger guys. What's the benefit? What's the key benefit of going? What you should try to accomplish while you're there? What you should expect? Um, and maybe some philosophies around that. So Alan hit it. Um. You know, my, my answer to this question or my suggestions have evolved over time. And my very first pest world, I registered for like all the classes, the full track. And I was in there taking notes and didn't miss like any of those sections. And for the people that haven't been, um, and I'm going to try to say this in like a politically correct way, but not all those courses or classes or breakoffs or sessions or seminars are the best use of your time. Some of them, yes. And you're not going to know until you go to a few of them and you get a feel for them. But and do it, do it tactfully. But if you end up in, in one 
and the instructor wasn't really what you thought and the presentation's not going the direction you thought that's going to help you leave and if you if you're not sure don't sit up front do it in a way that is respectful don't make a big scene but don't waste your time in those some of them are very valuable but the most valuable thing that you're going to get out of pest world is going to come from the people that you meet it's super cliche but i would somebody asked me just a couple of days ago they're heading to their first pest world my buddy aaron o'brien shout out to him nice. running a great running a great shop here in arizona and he asked me like hey what am i looking for like this is my first time I'm like meet people go outside of your comfort zone talk to vendors make sure obviously come by the bug bucks booth like you oh, have yeah. to if you yep. if you're listening to this show I will hunt you down if you don't come by our booth. We're going to be doing all sorts of cool giveaways. We are going to be doing uh, a live. I think we're going to just have that thing rolling while we're in the convention center. So yeah. make sure you come by the booth. You got to meet me, Hunter, Jake, Eric, Jana, the whole squad. But it's those types of relationships, meeting vendors too, meeting other pest controllers. Um you know, do, do those types of things where you're, you're getting out of your comfort zone, especially for those, you know, you guys that are going by yourselves, a lot of you do. And it's different when you're by yourself. I've been to a pest world by myself. My very first one, Nashville, Tennessee, 2015. I didn't know anybody and I didn't take advantage of it. So go talk to people, talk to the vendors, see what new equipment's coming out. See, um, see what, what they have to help your company also see what you can give back find other people that have questions that you may be able to answer most people that i run into are going to have more bug and technical knowledge than i have for mm -hmm. sure and so that's something that you can give to me and just just you know it's cliche but it's cliche for a reason find people make those lifelong connections i still from that 2015 um, pest world. I still text a couple of people that I met there, ask them questions. You know, it's fun. The other thing is have fun. If you're not having fun, just, just a little insider information. Vendors have budgets that they can blow during pest world. And the, and the bigger the company, man, you should see some of these vendors lay it down. Now, some, some, Vendors are looking for the larger companies, those larger relationships, but get to know people when you, when you see face to face, a vendor that you've been talking to on the phone for a year or whatever, it changes things. So you should be going to dinners, um, with vendors, other pest controllers, make sure that it is as much a social event as it is an educational event. That's awesome. Yeah, totally. You know what? And, um, I, dude, I second that. The networking that's that happens at Pest World is awesome. Um, I I hadn't gone to Pest World. I mean, I'd done all the regional conferences, but I hadn't done Pest World until last year. And yeah, it was it was really really cool. Um, I'm looking forward to this year's Pest World because in the last year, uh, we have I have made personally a way more connections through the mm -hmm. podcast through the Facebook group, through, you know, just chatting with people individually on messenger. And then not to mention all the, all the, uh, the connections, the networking that happened at pest world last year. And, you know, as far as vendors go, we got linked up with at least two new, like major products that have really brought a lot of value mm -hmm. to our, to our service a mosquito thing and a bed bug thing. So, uh, you know, yeah, talk to the vendors. Um, you know, nobody knows everything, but everybody knows something. Okay. So, yeah. Well, I think it's crazy, you know, to imagine, uh, th think about your journey in pest control as a PCO, right? You go from maybe working for another pest control company to starting your own company, or maybe taking the leap from a different industry. And then you're in it as some solo operator, right? And like, we've talked about this before it's like drinking from a fire hose, you know, mm -hmm. like it's just wild and crazy. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, I mean, there are like local association meetings, which are pretty cool, right? You get to meet mm -hmm. some people, but sometimes it's tough to know, like, can I network with this guy? We operate in the same locale, like what's the situation here, right? Um, but you have Pest World, 
where you can go and find people that are exactly like, not exactly like you, but pretty close, right? They are either in your shoes or maybe you're a little bit ahead of them. And so you can kind of share your experience with those people, or you're going to find people who have been in your shoes who are happy to share their experience and kind of things to look out for. So man, Pest World is like the one place you can go to once a year where there are thousands of people who are just like you or have been like you mm -hmm. or, or they're going to be you in a few years. Yep. Right. So it's just a really opportunity. Like Alan was saying, the networking aspect of it is so big because there's a lot of stuff you can learn about the technical sides of different products and stuff, which is important. Mm -hmm. Like you said, um, or, you know, service like products itself, like CRMs and other things. And that's super cool. Yep. Um, but I mean, I think we can all agree that the the power of networking has probably done more for us in business totally than just about anything else. Yep. So I think that'd be that'd be really cool. Um, and come by seriously. Come by the booth. Come by the booth. Yes. Come by the booth. Look, stickers. We will have stickers. I'm not gonna. We can't. I'm not gonna give away all the cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not gonna tell you guys what it is. You're gonna have to. We got some find tricks out, up our right? sleeve. Oh yeah. Yeah. Or sleeves. We all um, have sleeves. Alan, do you, do you schedule <laughs> stuff like around Pest World? Would you like recommend if someone's going to go to Pest World that they kind of have some stuff on the outside of that recreational activities, stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. The, so my schedule, I notice it just starts filling up for, for, uh, and I will have two companies there. So lizard will be there and then obviously bug bucks. Mm -hmm. And so we have events and we have our own, um, uh, things that we do. And then I also have events with vendors, but one thing that I've started doing is, um, I try to do something that's like cool to the, the location. Now I have a branch in Denver. I have a mm -hmm. uh, couple of offices in the Denver area. So I used to go there all the time. It's not like Hawaii or whatever. Um, but you do, do some local stuff and find somebody to go with you. Like I'm, I'm doing, I'm really big into fly fishing and, uh, Colorado is a great place to fly fish. So one day I'm going on a guided trip and I posted that in the group. Hey, if anybody wants to come with me, um, and it doesn't have to be like something as complicated as fly, go on cool hikes, go see some cool stuff, but make sure you do it with somebody. Uh, in Hawaii last year, I organized a golf event, um, and, uh, met up with, uh, some good friends of mine. And I think one person, I think Kenzie, I, I don't know that I had met him before we played, uh, golf together, but just do stuff like that. Like plan ahead, be proactive and, um, you know, go, go to the social events. And if somebody's like, Hey, um, there's a group of us going to get dinner and you were planning on getting something from McDonald's and taking it up to your hotel room. Don't be a loser. <laughs> do, do that at another time. Pest World's expensive. It's the, yeah. the travel, the the admission. That stuff's expensive. Use that time and go hard. If you, when I, when I'm done with Pest World, I'm exhausted. Yeah, I did a family vacation for a week in Hawaii last year before Pest World, and then Pest World. I'm never doing that again because by the time Pest World was over, I was just completely exhausted. You've got to feel that way, and it's got to be this like, hey. I made lifelong connections so that even when, you know, maybe I sell my pest control company someday, I still have these people, this core group. A lot of those people I met at Pest World. Yep. Man. Yeah, Wild, that's cool. Dude. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, okay. So let's, let's shift gears. I actually have a, I actually have a, a thing I want to ask Alan. Oh, okay. About. You're going to pick Alan's brain just a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to pick Alan's All brain right. a little bit. So, um, so here we are, uh, three years later, almost to the week. Well, let's see. What's today's date? The tenth. Whatever. We'll say to the week. Yeah. 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 Uh, since the formation of Bug Bucks. So, what I want to hear uh, from Alan, I want to hear the origin story. Mm. Like, how did how did mm. Bug Bucks? How did this empire come to be? <laughs> Dude, you know what? Like that that word empire. Dude, you could. Dude, Bug Bucks is an empire to me. Yeah. Like. I, there was, you know, they recently talked about the, uh, I've learned some details about the Aptive Cell the private equity company. And I, I, I know a bunch of details I'm not going to get into. And that was their empire. 
dude bug bucks is 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 mine man like and i don't care you, numbers are th- th- those are secondary but and i and a lot of that has to do with the origin story because we started the po- the podcast three years ago i i guess this week that that i didn't know i knew it was about that but bug bucks which back then was start and grow your pest control company yeah. we started that in like may of 2020 so over four yeah. years ago mm-hmm. so um and the idea was it was super weird because covid was it was the the really confusing time of covid some people are still confused about it yes but, they are indeed <laughs> but it was the i was confused stage like what is this like are we all gonna die like april may 2020 and i felt like you know everybody working from home there was that lack of connection i was really frustrated generally with the the advice going back and forth in other pest control groups on facebook like bro there was this one guy without fault if there was a question about how to handle hiring or employee situation or an hr whatever anything regarding an employee this guy would respond well six months later after this guy 50 responses i find out he's never hired anybody and i was Mm -hmm. i was ticked and i was like dude if you're gonna you clearly can have a voice i don't have a problem with that but tell people hey by the way this is what i think you should do but i don't know because I've never actually hired somebody. And so that was kind of the straw that broke the proverbial camel's back. And I started mm-hmm. the group. Um, there was also some legal advice going back and forth between people <laughs> that didn't. There was this one guy that was talking about uh, liability and write-offs that didn't have, uh, didn't have a state organization. He was treating himself as a sole prop for tax. Re- it was so bad. But I... And our group's not perfect, man. Sure. We still have a bunch of stuff that goes on that I'm like, yeah, no, definitely don't do that. But <laughs> that, that was where it started. And I fell in love with it. I remember when I like started the group, it was a Saturday and I was watching some sports or something and somebody joined it. And I was like, no way. Like, <laughs> I'm like, there's we somebody. That... One. <laughs> and then within a week we or two, we had like a hundred. And I was like, there is no way. This is awesome. And now we're the largest owner of uh, Facebook group in the pest control industry. And so it's fantastic. Yeah. But, you know, back in the day, it was just um, not like I was looking for something to do because you guys know me. I've always got a hundred things going on. But mm-hmm. You know, I freaking love this industry. I'm a lawyer and I'm a real est- licensed real estate agent. I'm part of a brokerage. i very heavy in real estate. Dude, pest control is different. It's, mm-hmm. it's different. And um, I love this industry. So I, I'm never going to not be a part of pest control. And, and Bug Bucks has just like solidified that tie. And, you know, back then it was like, Hey, let's see if there's one person that I can help with their pest control company. Now bug bucks is helping thousands of pest control companies on a monthly basis. And it's, Mm -hmm. it's just incredible to watch what it's become. But, um, you know, back then it was, let's, you, you know, I was more involved in the admin and the, you know, the, I did more posting and more commenting and, I know you guys do a great job of that, especially Eric. And I've kind of taken a back seat to that, but there's so much value in those conversations and stuff. And so bug bucks, it's like a lot of our companies that back on that Saturday, when I hit the go, you know, go public or whatever the button is on Facebook, Mm -hmm. dude, I couldn't have imagined that in, (laughs) you know, four, four years, it would become what it is today. So, yeah. What's up, my fellow Bug Bucksers? I'm going to take a moment to highlight one of our premier sponsors of the Bug Bucks podcast. Cockroaches have nowhere to hide from Advion Trio Cockroach Gel Bait. This Syngenta solution is formulated to control cockroaches at every stage of the life cycle. With three active ingredients, including an insect growth regulator and a chitin synthesis inhibitor, it offers complete cockroach control with built-in resistance management. PMPs can complement their Advion Trio applications with Advion Microflow Insect Bait. 
which can reach small voids on cleanout and maintenance accounts as a dry flowable bait. Both products can also be used as part of the Secure Choice Cockroach Assurance Program for proven results. Yeah, when it's it's crazy. Like when I think about the Facebook group, because I think I think I joined, I don't know, first couple hundred, first few hundred members, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, and it was funny because I didn't think that I had uh, like so much information that I wanted to share. Um, and then people started asking questions and I was like, I might probably have an answer for that. Like, let's, let's dive in. Right. Hmm. 25 minutes later, after I have a horribly long comment, <laughs> um, but people thought it was cool. No, and I was like, that. yeah, well, that's not me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it, it was, it, it fulfilled me in a way that, um, I hadn't been yet. Right. So like, that was really, really cool. Um, and then the next thing that I thought was just awesome is, uh, I remember feeling like somebody popped a question in the group. And I was like, oh, that's such a good question. I, I do not have time to, you know, give an Eric answer on this, right? And so I was like, oh, I'll come back to that later. And when I came back to it, um, it had been, I mean, the comments, tons of comments, right? Tons of really good comments from uh, really established pest control companies, good, smart owners, right? That had filled in all the gaps. And it's kind of that thing when you build a business and you feel like you have to do a lot of it on your own and you kind of hold that, that responsibility, and then you realize, like, if you just kind of like let go for a second, that it kind of runs on its own. You know, yep. it's like when you send your kid on the on the bike without training wheels for the first time, and you're yeah. like, "Oh my gosh, that's crazy!" Yep. You know. And so to watch to watch Bug Bucks um, not just help PCOs the way that it does, but does it in a way that it's an actual full community of people helping each other. That's such a unique thing. Yeah. And it's so cool, right? Um, very little, like little judgment usually, unless somebody does something really crazy. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it's just a place where you can ask any question. Right. Um, so it's, it's been kind of a cool journey in my mind, yeah. which has been a lot of fun. Well, I've, the th and we've talked about this so many times on the, on the podcast, but, uh, one, of, one of the things I love the most about what bug bucks is doing is that it is, it is blowing wide open the old school mentality that everybody's got to protect their 11 secret herbs and spices. Yeah, you know, yep. <laughs> that was the mentality for so many years in pest control is the mentality. When I first got into pest control, uh, almost 20 years ago, um, it was the mindset of pest control. When we started the business, uh, 11 years ago, which we just, this is our, what's this say September. Oh, this is September. Yeah. 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 We're, oh my yeah. gosh. I, Today, didn't I ask Eric? Is today is today October first? Yeah, yeah. Jake's like hey, today October. No, Jake. No, it is not. No, I just had a total brain fart Jeez. this morning. Yeah. So most so people we, are a couple of minutes late. Freaking Jake's like two weeks early or three weeks. Yeah, man. I don't yeah. even know. I don't even know anymore. Um, but uh, yeah, so so we're in. We're just past our eleven year mark to the week, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so when we started eleven years ago. That's how it was too. It's like, oh, don't ask, don't ask questions. You're on your own, you know? And I don't know if it was like that everywhere, but that was certainly the vibe that I was feeling in the, in the pest control world. So I love that, that Alan and, uh, and Eric have, have started this community that does the exact opposite of that. You know, uh, my eighth spice is paprika <laughs> or whatever your 11 herbs and spices are, right? Like, it's all about sharing. Um, it's all about uh, an abundance growth mindset. There's no, uh, there's no scarcity here. There's as much pie as anybody wants. And in fact, the more pie that we all chase, the more pie there is because people don't need less pest control, right? No. There aren't fewer people needing pest control. So that's one thing that I love it. I love that this community has become that. You know what's funny is tomorrow I'm uh, doing my first event in a speaker series with the Florida Pest Management Association. That's mm. going to be monthly, so it's September, October, November, and then live at their uh, expo in January. And I'm telling the story about Greg Maddox, and I'm a huge Atlanta Braves fan, and he's... Uh, uh, four time Cy Young winner, uh, first ballot Hall of Famer, all these things. My first son, my oldest son, his name's Maddox. And, um, Crazy. So, he's named after your first son. 
crazy and he's Whoa. like and he's older than me so think of the Nuts. think of the <laughs> metaphysics but um so so the when when the whole uh thing came out with the astros cheating you know they would use cameras to see the sign from the mm-hmm. catcher and then bang on the garbage cans so someone asked greg maddox like hey what do you think about this that they're like you, you know they're they're telling him what the pitch is and, and he's like you know what i don't care that much I could tell you what the pitch is going to be, which is an 89 mile mile per hour sinker. And you're not even going to swing at it. (laughs) And it was like, and I'm like, dude, that's kind of like business. Like a lot of the things that I do, I could tell people everything that I know. If I had that capability, a lot of the stuff that I do, I don't even think about, I don't even, Mm -hmm. I don't even know, but let's say I could get it all out there. People aren't even going to do it. Their their situation, their geo, their culture, their personal goals, their access to cash, their employees, their network, all these things are so different that I'm going to tell them and they're not even going to swing at it. So yeah. it's like, for me, it's like, how, how can I say something that it, they're not going to do it exactly like I did it? But there's going to be an analogy. They're going to be like, okay, well, Alan did it this way, but Alan, you know, his first branch was in Michigan. I'm located in Southern California. I'm going to tweak it a little bit. So that's my goal. And and so for me, it's like, but I do have some people pretty close in my life. They're zero sum game people. They're like, no, don't tell them. Don't tell them. It's like, oh my goodness. Like, (laughs) I'm just in it for different reasons, man. That's that's not me. Well, you know, the wild thing is, is that, is that when you uh, when you have that mindset, your circle shrinks smaller and smaller and smaller, and so do your resources, and uh, and so does your network, you know. But when it's the opposite, your network and your resources and your circle just grow and grow and expand, yeah. and that's the that's the objective. I think that's the best part of it. Well, and usually, you know, I've had, oh, I, I can't even count the number of phone calls that I've had from uh, connections in the group, right? I talked to a, a guy earlier today. It was awesome. And it's, and he's like, hey, do you have a quick minute? Question about inside sales and some other stuff that we've got for marketing for this next year. And I was like, I got 10 minutes before this next meeting. Like, let's dive in, right? And when I started talking about the details, you know, like you kind of realize that just like Alan said, even if I were to give this guy like all my special sauce, you know, like, like give him a, a, a step-by-step guide on how to do it, you know, like by the time that he actually executes on all that, if he executes on all that, it has nothing to do with me. Like it's not going to hurt me at all. Right. And what I've actually done is injected some good out into the world from what my own experience is to help someone else build and scale and grow their company who might hopefully help someone else build and scale and grow their company. Right. And shout out to that guy because he actually, in the group, he was talking about um, networking with other pest control owners Mm -hmm. and actually proactively saying, hey, like, let me show you how my operation works. I want to see how your operation works for like similarly sized companies. And then he wanted to kind of go a step further and say, let's challenge each other. Like, let's have these calls where we challenge each other and make sure that we're keeping up on our goals and stuff. Yeah. And I thought, dude, yes, like, you know where it's going, right? Like that's the kind of the kind of vibe that we want to have in the group. Yeah. Um, but even if it's a ten minute phone call, you know, or a five minute phone call, or whatever the situation is, like, network with somebody, you know, put some information out there. Um, okay, so um, this leads me to the next question I wanted to ask Alan, and this is great because Alan knows a crap load about a crap load, <laughs> and so I think it's really great to be able to pick his brain. And I hope everybody out there listening, um, you know, all the all the listeners or viewers are like paying attention and taking notes, do it on every episode because there is so much happening here. But um, I want to ask Alan, like what challenges, what challenges do you think uh, are the biggest hurdles for new and growing PCOs? And what are some, what are some, uh, I don't want to say shortcuts because oftentimes there's no such thing as a shortcut, but what would you say to, what what would you uh, talk about to those biggest challenges and hurdles? I think it really comes down to two things, money management and people. You, when you're small, I know a lot because I've made a lot of mistakes, a lot. And some of my biggest mistakes are with money and people. When, when you're small, 
not only do you not have the luxury, the runway, the the capacity to make a lot of those mistakes really quickly, um, you're you're new, so you don't. Those are the two things that you you don't have. So, so you feel like okay, I can't make a mistake here. And if you feel like you can't make a mistake with money and personnel, then you don't go out, you know, and 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 try. So, um, and my that first speaker series that or speaking event that's that's tomorrow, um, which I don't think people can access after the fact. So, and this is three mm -hmm. weeks later, month later, um, but it was about it's about money. So, mm -hmm. um, it's. Like I've seen some P&Ls of early companies and you know what I should do is I should go back to Proof's first P&L. You guys should hold me to this and I should post <laughs> it in our group because yeah. it's probably, it probably has four lines. It's like marketing, <laughs> pest control, revenue, you know, so, so I get it, but, um, make sure you know where your money's going. A lot of, a lot of early entrepreneurs man, they pay themselves too much. And I cringe when I see it. They mm -hmm. are sucking the life out of their company because they want a new house. They're a big, bad business owner. And now they, you know, they're making a little bit of money. It's like, goodness gracious, invest in your company and you'll be able to do so much more. But yeah, get money right. And, you know, so, so the biggest mistakes with money owners paying themselves too much, not investing enough back into their company. The biggest mistake with personnel is they take too long to hire that first individual. And that first individual has to be a technician. Do not hire anybody else except for a technician. It's so hard for us as pest controllers to be answering the phones and working with marketing and talking to vendors and all these things. If we're in the freaking truck, if, if, for, if our job in an you know, alternate reality, we were for, for our day-to-day, -day, our, our technical aspect of our job was sitting in front of a computer in an office, that would be different. And some people have some good systems where they have their laptop in their truck or whatever. I remember trying to run around while I was trying to close deal. I would I'd pull off to the side of the road and you have to do what you have to do. I always say that there's three steps to an entrepreneur's life in terms of how they spend their time and their business. Number one is they do what they have to do. Number two is they do what they're good at. And number three is they do what they want to do. And that's the dream, right? Whether that's, hey man, I wanna be in a crawl space or dude, I wanna come in for monthly meetings and just look at financials, anything in between. So number one, with the money, make sure that you're not paying yourself too much and I'm going to throw a second one in there. Make sure that you have readable and, and manageable financial statements that you can make decisions mm. from. And number two, don't wait too, too long to make that first hire. Isn't the idea to, to uh, hire to replace yourself? So, you know, you hire your first technician that gets you out of the truck. Then after you're rolling and, uh, and can afford it, then you hire an office staff to handle all the office, all the office work. Um, and then you, uh, and then you hire someone to do the marketing. So you're not doing the marketing anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, isn't that, isn't that kind of the idea? I mean, is that, is that the, the advice that you would give Alan? Yeah. So the, so the thing is, if you follow those steps, you do what you have to do, you do what you're good at, you do what you want to do. So as you're deciding who to hire, you, you want to do those, those elements that, that help you get to the next phase that help you get to that next step. And a lot of times business owners have a hard time hiring somebody better than them. They have a hard time with it because it's their well, Nobody is better at your job than you are. Exactly. So, well, that's why you don't, that's why you hold off, right? Exactly. Well, funny, yeah. Yeah. You, you think about it and I, I see managers run into this problem a lot more often than anything else. Right. So you see them bring in candidates um, or you see them make like a, a hiring move where you're like, okay, I feel like you hired that guy um, because you don't want to be shown up in the same room, yeah, right? Uh, or you hired that person because you know that you can tell them what to do and they're not going to kind of push back, right? Or they're not going to upstage you. But really, it's like that, that saying goes, like if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room, right? Mm -hmm. 
And as a manager, I think a lot of managers, and this kind of translates into PCOs later on in life, right? Um, a lot of managers will hire and they are thinking to themselves, like, my value is in being the smartest, most hardworking, most dedicated person on this team, right? And it's like, no, that's not your value. Your value is bringing the smartest, m hardest working, most dedicated people into the team, mm -hmm. right? That's your value. You know, I sometimes I don't need you out in a truck. I need you getting people that are out in trucks doing the work. Yep. So if you if you become an owner from a manager, right, and you're kind of used to that mindset, um, then yeah, you might follow those same types of fears, right? Where you're thinking, okay, like I'm the manager, like I'm the owner of the company. I don't want to hire a guy that's going to look better, sound better, do better, work harder than me, right? And you, it's hard to let things go because you're also thinking if you truly believe that no one can do those things better than you, then you're never going to delegate either, which, oh man, now that you, now that I think about it, that's such a tough place to be in and you're never going to grow. And a good point that Alan made when it talked about hiring a technician, right? In the beginning, early stages of your pest control company, the admin stuff is not that complicated. It isn't, Right. Um, the admin stuff is a resource that like, if you become efficient with it, you can actually manage it pretty well on your own. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but there is a, like the amount of time that you have to spend in the field doing services, that's kind of a fixed resource, right? Like you can only get so much out of that. Yeah. You can only get so efficient before it actually works against you. Yeah. So I just kind of wanted to echo the same thing that Alan was saying, which is, you know, uh, when you first start building your pest control company do what you have to do, which is mm -hmm. get as many clients as possible so that you can get to the point where you can afford getting another truck, hiring another technician, doing what you have to there, right? And then you can kind of get out of the field and start working on marketing and vendors and ways to make your you know business more efficient and putting on additional customers. And then you follow that same process. And when you have to hire an admin, then you do. And then you kind of follow the same process. So, um, so when, when Eric and I, we, we worked for the same company in Boise a lot of years ago, and I know I talk about this a lot, but, um, when I was being recruited by that company, I was also being recruited by another local company in Boise. And so I'm out knocking one day and, um, and I see the owner of the other company and he drives up and he's in a service truck and he's servicing this customer's house. And so I chatted with him for a second. And then when I went to go drop my contracts off that night, I just mentioned to the owners at Gemtech, Hey, uh, I, I bumped into so-and-so today and they're like, Oh, what was he doing? I said, well, he was servicing a uh, customer's house. And, uh, and I remember I'll never forget this response, but the owner of the company that I was working for, he said, what a freaking waste of time. And I remember <laughs> thinking, wait, what? <laughs> what do you mean it's a waste of time? And I think I even said that, like, wait, what do you mean? And he goes, dude, he's the owner of the company. He shouldn't be in a freaking service truck. Like, what a waste of his time. He should hire someone to be in that service truck to go out and do the services so that he can go out and knock doors, put on accounts, work on marketing, you know, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that I, that I think I had that real paradigm shift. If you're the owner of a pest control company, especially when you're at a certain size, you shouldn't be in the truck servicing the accounts. And that's not necessarily, maybe that's not necessarily true across the board. And maybe you're sitting there going, shoot, I'm not at that. I'm not at that place yet. But isn't that kind of the idea to get there as ASAP as possible? Well, like Alan was saying, you know, you do what you have to do, right? And I'm assuming that owners don't want to spend the rest of their career in a truck, right? But maybe you do like that. Maybe you genuinely enjoy it. And if that's the case, dude, more power to you. Right. Just make sure it doesn't keep you from scaling your business, right? Because there are things that the business needs from you as an owner that are going to be at the mercy of the time that you're spending in a truck doing services. Yep. Right. So anyway, um, Alan, we're, we're short on time. Um, mm -hmm. and of course, I mean, I feel like we're actually kind of lucky to snag you this time around because you're so busy, but we're going to have to have you back again, maybe post pest world or something, have a little debrief. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. PPW. It would be um, cool. But, uh, just some closing thoughts from you, Alan, any other advice that you have for PCOs, um, anything on the horizon for, uh, as an industry that people should be looking out for? You know, the industry's in a really cool spot right now. Um, pest control companies are worth a lot of money just period. 
Um, mm-hmm. We're going to see interest rates decrease here very shortly, and they're going to go on for a while. Um, I think that makes pest control companies worth more money, but you got to talk to my guy, Paul Giannamore. He knows more about that than I do. But I look at recent exits and valuations, and there are some that are overwhelming, some getting really high numbers, and some that are, um, you know, a little underwhelming. And and for me, it's like, well, what what do I want to build? Um, early when, when you're getting that first million or whatever that mark is, you're so caught up in just like, you know, keeping the lights on making a few bucks, supporting your family. And then one day it happens and you're like, wait, what was my purpose? Right? Why, why was I doing this? And, um, you know, I think if you start there, um, you, you can, I, I think you can rebound after the fact. Sometimes you're, you're so busy with your head down, you don't have time to breathe or look up. And I like to say that if, you know, you're drowning in the middle of a lake, you're not worried what your swimming stroke looks like, right? I say that a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's like that when we're starting companies. It's like, man, I'm just in the weeds. I'm trying to get out. And we solve problems with people. So get people around you that share a vision, that share a goal, and make sure you solidify that. But, you know, we're we're always looking at the the biggest and baddest companies. And there have been some recent deals where it's like after every after the dust settles. And you look at the numbers, it's like, holy cow, they built, you know, a really big national company. And frankly, my cut of proof is worth more than a lot, <laughs> you know, a lot of guys at the top of that company. So, um, so do it for other reasons. Do it, you know, I, I think a lot of times, especially in the door to door world, we just care about numbers. Hey man, what was your CVA? How much in revenue did you do this summer? How many mm-hmm. accounts did you sell? Like, which, Hey, we got to measure stuff and, 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 and I don't have a problem with it, but like, let's do it for the right reasons. Let's, um, you know, you, you build something because at some point in your life, you're going to ask yourself, Hey, what's my legacy? What continues to exist when I'm no longer on this planet? And did I have my hand in anything special? Those of us that are our parents or fathers and mothers, man, we, we have that kind of built in, right? At least with our family, because our family continues to exist once we're gone, but we can do it professionally. I went to a funeral recently of Andrew Beck, right? He beloved Mm -hmm. in the pest control industry and he was beloved because of how much he gave. And he just had this purpose to be, to be frank with you. I tried to get him to run proof. This is years ago. And, um, he, there were certain things about what he was doing for the pest control industry. And it wasn't money because I offered him more money, offered him more. It was something else that he was trying to do. He was on this mission with his family and his company, and it just wasn't the right fit. So I, I just want us all to be a little more like Andrew Beck, myself included. Yeah, dude. And it's be like Beck. Yep. We should make sure it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Alan, this has been amazing. Um, as always, never a disappointment. Uh, you've been great. Appreciate the wisdom, appreciate the time. We're going to have you back on. And, uh, of course you always have a seat at the table on the bug bucks podcast. So (laughs) love it. Appreciate it. For everybody else listening. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen in. If you have a coworker or a manager or an owner who could benefit from listening to this episode, the best way to say thank you to us is to share this episode with them. If you haven't joined the Facebook groups yet, go find the groups and join. It's Bug Bucks Plus. Lots of information and even better connections there. If you have a topic you want discussed on the show, drop it in the group. As always, this episode is brought to you by Bug Bucks Plus, the number one training and education platform designed to help you build and scale your pest control company. Visit bugbucksplus.com to sign up and start building today. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for listening in. And until next time, keep building those pest control companies. You're listening to the Bug Bucks Podcast. Hosted by Eric Bassett and Jake Klaus.